Welcome back. Cabinet's confirming that it's authorized Dame Anita Allen to launch and conduct public consultations on the draft nationality, immigration and asylum bill. This much was revealed this afternoon in a release signed by Attorney General Carl Bethel. The proposed bill intended to replace the current immigration bill was released prematurely, according to Immigration Minister Brent Simonet this past Tuesday. This after roughly two weeks of discussion and public feedback related to what many thought was the consultative process. Few of the implications listed the new listed in the new bill rather includes a section that speaks to Bahamian women being able to pass down their citizenship. This past Tuesday, Mr. Simonet expressed that he's still shocked that Bahamians voted against this in the last referendum. The Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Bill was drafted by the Law Reform Commission, but the bill, which is 123 pages, would repeal the Bahamas Nationality Act and the Immigration Act. Simonette says he's aiming to release the immigration bill for consultation during the 2019-2020 budget debate. Search and rescue efforts continuing in the Abacos in hopes of finding missing boater James Green of Sandy Point, Abaco. Defense Force Commander dive of, of Dive Operations rather, Sean Pender provided this update to our news team. We continue with our efforts in collaboration with the local authorities there at uh, Abaco and of course with the Bajo local uh, area uh, volunteers and of course our partners with the U.S. Coast Guard. And uh, we also have ongoing activities with our service craft uh, conducting sweeps in the area uh, offshore in the Castaway Key area and surrounding island and keys. And uh, we also then have uh, aerial search uh, completed uh, later today as well. The statement this morning by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force confirmed that their assets were immediately dispatched to the surrounding area. The statement also noted that the search area extended from Abaco and its surrounding keys to Great Stirrup Key and the Berry Islands, along with shoreline patrols. Commander Pender noted that once the initial search area is executed, then they will expand. Uh, you have to take into account weather and factors uh, related to it that would affect circumstances that are there may be ruled out, but you look at all possibilities. And so as we continue to get information or factor in the uh, prevailing uh, weather conditions and all the other factors like tides in the, the area, we then tend to increase our search area uh, as time goes on uh, with the hopes of uh, you know successfully concluding our efforts. Green was last seen on a 17-foot open hull boat on Tuesday. Efforts to locate him are ongoing. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Defense Force at 424-9414 or the police at 328-8477. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis confirming yesterday that a contract was signed for an international firm to conduct a probe into what led to the removal of the former Bahamas Power and Light last August. The former Bahamas Power and Light board, rather, speaking to reporters on the sidelines of a radar commissioning ceremony in Inagua, the prime minister noted that the contract was signed just last week. Yes, we've signed the contract already, um, selected the company, and um, they should commence their um, questioning and investigations um, very soon. But I know everything has been signed. Um, no, I'm not giving you the name of the company. Not yet. With time, you'll get that. Following the removal of the board in August, the Prime Minister told reporters that an investigation will be launched into the matter. Works Minister Desmond Bannister at the time noted that the relationship between him and the board had deteriorated. Former BPL Chairperson Darnell Osborne, along with Nick Dean and Nicola Thompson, termed the minister's comments as misleading and inaccurate. The former chairman also noted that at the cruise of the issue was political interference. According to National Security Minister Marvin Dames, the country's geographic outlay, its major offshore center, and position as premier tourist destination creates opportunities for small arms, narcotics, 
human trafficking and money laundering. That said, the government received a $2.1 million long-range coastal radar from the United States Department of Defense. And as Mr. Dames puts it, this is an added element to the expansion of the government's multi-layered program, ensuring that the entire base at Inag was brought up to standard to complement this new technology. Contracts were signed totaling sub $573,000 with three construction companies on the island for the rebuilding of new units. The new structures will include a sick bay, a detention center, and a mechanical building. The total proposed projected capitalization and development, including the decentralization program, over the next three budget cycles is expected to cost somewhere in the area of $133 million. The Kelvin Coastal Radar falls into the framework for command control communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or C4ISR. Minister Dames adds that the radar will serve to enhance the Defense Force's efficiencies and effectiveness of its interdiction efforts operating in conjunction with Operation Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, or OPBAT. This long-standing multilateral counter-drug operation between the U.S. and the Turks and Caicos, he adds, focuses on narcotics interdiction and other forms of transnational organized crimes. Past experiences have proven that no single asset or equipment can adequately contrast the threats and challenges of our day. Hence, today's installation is part of a broader multi-layered security program asset, equipment acquisition and collaboration. At this time, let me take the, this opportunity to thank the U.S. Department of Defense for the donation of the over-the-horizon tracking system at the Coral Harbor base and aboard patrol and aircraft which preceded this. This added technology will also incorporate the use of multi-agency drone technology. The government's currently in the process of finalizing a $17 million contract with a vendor for the acquisitions of short and medium range drones to assist with interdiction and surveillance efforts under the multi-agency drone program led by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Keeping one's country safe and challenge is challenging for any nation, regardless of its size. The task is mammoth, and it is only expected to become more complex and multifaceted. Therefore, law enforcement agencies are expected to become more team-oriented, flexible, and resilient in their defenses, while being capable to respond to any call for assistance with the speed and agility. In addition, the resilience on technology, the reliance on technology, will only continue to grow, and so will multilateral partnerships. Good news for the Water and Sewage Union members. The unofficial results for yesterday's strike vote is out. And according to Bahamas Utility and Allied Workers Union President Dwayne Woods, the vote stands at 155 to 48 in favor of a strike action. As for the management union's votes, 23 yes and 14 no. That said, here's Mr. Woods on the, next, on the union's next move. Well, you know, we, with, with, with Easter upon us, um, uh, we would like to break and, and take a break and let a cooling off period exist and, and um, uh, pay and pay respect to the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and hope that after the Easter has passed, that the corporation in all its wisdom, along with its executive chairman and team, would come to the table. Um, through the process process of communication, try to resolve the matter so that we don't have to get to um, uh, draw our greatest weapon, eh?
According to the Busiwu president, union members were excited yesterday to finally exercise their rights, adding that for a long time people have chalked their issues up to personal, petty and frivolous. In fact, just last week, Labor Director John Pinder said that a strike vote wasn't necessary and both unions' concerns can be worked out without industrial action. Well, here's Mr. Wood's response. Well, we, we share the same sentiments of people. We think they're petty and they're frivolous and they should have been resolved long time. But you can't resolve nothing if um, uh, it's about egos and, 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 and places when it comes to the table. WSC managerial union president Edna Roll also chimed in. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, a strike poll is, is for members to decide, and I think the results demonstrate that despite what he said, the, the members think otherwise. At issue are a number of grievances with the corporation's management. In the case of the manager's union, there's the outstanding industrial agreement, which President Edna Roll claims WSC chairman Adrian Gibson simply refuses to sign. For the line staff, the major bone of contentions, an alleged breach in union leave and promotional policies vote. Both unions agreed, though, that enforcing a strike action will be the last option. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.